let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the small size Elena backpack by I Think So Patterns. This is so cute. Um, I made it for Dorothy for her birthday. Um, I had asked her one time, do you want a backpack like mommy's? And she's like, yeah. And I already showed it to her and she loved it. So I added this back slip pocket for dolls. Um, she carries this thing everywhere, naked, only naked. Uh, Eugene from Tangled. And we use these locking sliders here. I added a little D-ring here for like little keychains, etc. but you could add a second one and make it a crossbody bag, honestly. Like it would sit a little awkward, but especially if it's a kid's backpack, you know they're gonna get tired of carrying it. You might not wanna carry it. So as a crossbody, it could work. Um, and then I also added a D-ring here for keychains, etc., and possibly a little um, leash for the airport. Who knows? We'll see. Um, and I do intend to make, like Lynn's Handmade um, has a little video for, I think, a little strap to keep it closed around the front that can easily break away, of course, but um, just to keep it more comfortable, keep the weight situated for them. This is a really good size for her. Honestly, I thought it was going to be a little bit too big, but it wasn't. And um, I initially had set out to print the Elena at, I believe, 70% smaller. I'll include at the ends as kind of like a blooper. Um, and then when I opened the pattern, I was like, oh, there already is a small. I'll just print that out. So it's like maybe an inch bigger all the way around than what I would have printed it at. But she'll grow into it. Um, I used Cotton Lycra interfaced with Sofuse Plus. It has great shape. Um, I used waterproof canvas for the lining and waterproof canvas for the binding. And that's it. You know, it was pretty, pretty simple to make. I do think this could be made on a domestic machine. You just have to be careful with the materials you use. You definitely wouldn't want to add like a thick vinyl back slip pocket like this. Um, on the inside here, I added a little pocket overlay. I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And let's get to sewing. Mine. That's your backpack. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. Do you like it? Birthday. 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 Eugene. Eugene. Eugene's on your backpack. Backpack. First, I'm going to start with the backpack straps. Um, and I'm doing a bit of a mashup for these. Um, so I've cut these pieces to about 13 by 3 inches. And then I have a 1.5 inch wide piece of foam interfaced to the fabric. So... I'm adding double-sided tape to each long side and then a little bit on the bottom. The foam is cut to 12 inches and I'm going to fold up the bottom to create a non-raw edge and I'm going to fold in the sides. I am using locking sliders for this backpack. Um, and I'm going to be attaching them with webbing. So if you watched making the full size of this backpack, you'll have seen kind of what I did. Um, and I'm taking that similar method uh, and just adapting it to add the locking sliders. So folding the edges in to kind of meet around to make a padded strap. And then I've cut some pieces of webbing to about 15 inches. Hopefully that's long enough. And I'm adding the locking slide to the bottom end. I'm going around that middle loop here. So then you can see 
editing Lauren here to tell you that you want the smooth side in the front with that little texture on the top bar, not the texture on the bottom. The texture on the bottom goes to the back. Textured bottom, back, got it? Don't make the same mistake I did. And then I'm gonna tape this down onto the strap. sew it in place. Hmm. We grab a trash can. All right, so I'm centering this onto the backpack. Editing Lauren here once again. The way you would want to start this is you would want to have a little piece of your webbing underneath the longer piece so basically the reverse of this so that way your longest strip is through the slider and then attach it to your strap yeah that way you don't have any raw edge showing and you can do that same step but again you want the textured bottom to the back of your strap. And hopefully I won't forget that next time I do these because I really like the ladder lock. Because then we have another strap that's going to be attached below that will slide up and down that bar and give it some extra texture. All right, so I'm going to sew this into place. And I th I'm pretty sure it's going to be smart to do a box stitch down here at the bottom just for added security. If you think about it, this part's going to get tugged on quite a bit. So we just want to make sure it is as secure as possible. This machine does have an automatic needle positioner and I'm still getting used to it. And so with an automatic needle positioner, when you hit the very front of your foot pedal, it will bring your needle up. And then just make sure that you've left your threads long enough. So there's what that looks like. And then I'm gonna add a little box stitch. With the walking foot, you want to make sure you're using a little scrap of leather to re to protect your hardware. can pull my threads to the back and trim. And that is one strap nearly finished. And we'll just repeat that on the other side. So it's a super quick way of doing it. And it's a way to still use that one inch wide um, locking slider or ladder lock, whatever they call it. Uh, 
I am using uh, cotton lycra for the exterior and I've used SoFuse Plus to interface it, just one layer, and it feels so nice. I love using cotton lycra for bags, especially backpacks and especially for a little girl. Um, or a little one, I should say. It doesn't have to be a girl, but like it's really soft. Um, so it's not going to irritate your skin when you wear it, stuff like that. And I feel like it needs less interfacing too. Right. So taking that piece and laying it down and flip it over. And again, you're just going to go through the, around that biggest metal middle bar. And I guess if for some reason you wanted to tuck this into your seam there, you totally could do that too. I'm just going to fold this up until the ladder lock matches the other side. So I just need a little more down below. That doesn't match. Oh, because it's upside down. Okay, perfect. used to ensuring my needle placement with the <clears throat> turn wheel but I'm always like wait what <laughs> so then I'm just adding that little box stitch around the bottom I am also adding a little back slip pocket um, with a clear vinyl. I thought it could be fun for her to put like a doll into and carry around. Maybe. So there are the straps finished. Okay, I've got this piece of clear vinyl here that is about 13 inches by 10 and a quarter. And then I went ahead and cut a 13 inch by one inch strip of a softer vinyl to add to the top of the pocket so it doesn't feel stabby. Not that it's a painful vinyl or anything like that, but If it's going to be on your back, you want something kind of soft. <clears throat> so I'm just going to lay that over and top stitch it. And what's cool about this clear vinyl is I can line it up really easily. Um, the clear vinyl I'm using is from Wonderground Fabrics. It's a sparkly clear, um, I'd say it's probably like a 12 gauge vinyl. It's pretty thick. Stitches. 
Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste this into place along the back. Um, I will be adding straps and etc. to this, but I don't need to add those yet. And then I'm not gonna add any kind of zippered pocket to the back or anything extra. Um, well, maybe I'll just clip it for now and then I'll baste everything at once. This bag is finished with binding, so keep that in mind when you're adding extra bits to the bag. Okay, and now I'm going to work on the um, extra straps, the part that slides into the ladder lock to hold and adjust your bag. I've got four of these little triangles cut out and all I'm going to do is slide this into the end with about an inch or so into the seam allowance. Grab some more clips and we're going to sew in an L shape along the edges of two of them. So we're going to sew here and then down. and set this up on the other side. Which way is it? Yeah, that's what I thought. So you want your strap to be about an inch in so that you're not catching it within the other side seam allowance pieces. And here we go. Keeping about an inch inside that seam allowance will help reinforce so that, again, when you're constantly tugging on that piece, it doesn't start to pull away over time. And I always like to do a little back stitch in that corner. Okay, and then I'm going to trim away the excess at the corner. I'm not going to trim away anything else just at that corner. And then we'll pull this through and top stitch. I love any backpack with this kind of strap connector um, because it helps reduce bulk within the seam allowance, which is always helpful. Oh, I can use this one. So I'm just using an edge to kind of help push, but nothing sharp. And then if you want to iron that flat, you can, but I'm just going to kind of roll it. Repeat that on the other side. going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. And this is another place where if you wanted to do a little box stitch to help reinforce that webbing, you absolutely can. just trimming away the extra little dog ears they call them from that piece and now I'm ready to put the back panel together I'm going to fold this piece in half to mark my top center I will need that when I place the backpack straps 
Okay, so these need to face up. I'll show you in just a second. So I'm placing them right above the curve of the backpack. There. I'm repeating that on the other side. So they're pointing up. We've got the bottom of it right before the curve. So I'll go ahead. No, I don't need to base that yet. Um, I have this really awesome little tool from Carolina Stitches. Carolina Little Stitches, I apologize. Um, but it is a little tool that helps you with backpack straps. So it's got this um, shallow angle and then a more intense angle. And the shallow angle is to cut your backpack straps. So they're that little slight angle to make it a little more ergonomically comfortable. So then you just cut them in opposite directions of one another. Using that tool. Boom. No measuring needed. I, I love it. So then you want to make sure that they're going up and out from that seam. Well, I guess this one's a little bit different than a normal backpack with that overlay. So I'm going to place these about an inch from the snip I made in the center. Go ahead and measure just to be sure. Okay, and then I have a hang strap here, and I'm adding a little D ring to the center of the seam as well. Um, to clip things onto or clip the backpack onto something else in case she decides she no longer wants to carry it. Because <laughs> we know that would happen. Okay, so then I go ahead and baste all of that together. And I can switch to a longer stitch length for that. Laying my grab handle back in place. I am overlapping the grab handle onto the backpack strap just a little bit. And then I put that D-ring in place. So we've got all that basted together and to finish off all we're going to do is slide this up and then back down and then we've got those like locking sliders in place. Okay, 
I think I somehow put the sliders on backwards and it's the smooth side that needs to be on the front. That's my bad. And the more textured side needs to go to the back. That's my bad, but <laughs> they still work. They still work. I just slid it on there backwards. It means there'll be less stuff flapping about for her to mess with. It's fine. It's for a two year old. She won't care. <laughs> Okay, moving on to the zippered pocket for the inside. I'm just adding one zippered pocket. Again, a two-year-old doesn't need a lot of pockets. So I'm just going to add two little pieces of double-sided tape along the outermost edge of the zippered pocket overlay. Um, the overlay is for a six and a half inch opening. Um, I used a, the nifty little zipper overlay rulers from Carolina Little Stitches. <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> so I'm gonna fold this piece in half to find my centers. I'm gonna line up my ruler about three inches down from the top edge. And then I'll center this. Which means I've got about, yep, two inches from each outer edge. And then you can lay the vinyl up against your ruler and then peel off the little bottom tape. I'm going to add a little woven label here. Okay. Switch my stitch length back to about a 4.5. And then I'm going to sew around the outside edge. And this bag does not get turned through this pocket, so I don't need to worry about leaving a bottom edge open. So I'm going to cut open the inner fabric. And I do have a video showing this process a little slower and in depth if you're curious. But this is definitely my favorite method at the moment of doing a zipper pocket with an overlay. All right. I'm going to take my zipper and I always like to cut my zipper tape way longer than I need it to be. Just makes it easier. Make sure your zipper pull is off to the side. And then I'm sewing the zipper in place to the lining with the lining's right sides together <clears throat> on either end of the zipper tape.
and then I'm going to press this open. You want your lining to sit super flat if possible. And I'm gonna add double-sided tape to the top and bottom. And you could add your tape to the overlay on the back side, or you could add it to your fabric, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But I am gonna press this really quick because it just won't lay flat. But I'm gonna press it from the back side and I'm gonna fold the waterproof canvas as flat as possible, creating a nice seam like that. So much nicer. And then just peel off the tape from one side, whether it's the top or the bottom. And then line up your teeth and line up your fabric as well. You want the fabric to be fairly centered within that zippered pocket. Press one side into place. I'm not up quite high enough. And then press the other side into place and you can peel off the rest of the tape and I will start top stitching closest to my zipper pull on that corner back stitch. Pivot at that corner. And then as you're getting close to the other side, you wanna make sure you're leaving enough room for you to pull your zipper, I should say push your zipper pull back in the overlay. Make sure your teeth stay aligned. And then pivot to close it off. And you can see from this side, I didn't really catch my zipper pocket lining pieces, but that's okay because I've already attached them to the zipper and it makes it so this back side can lay nice and flat as well. <clears throat> and then because I don't need to keep the zipper pocket open along the bottom, I can just trim off the extra from the bottom piece so that they're even and then sew around in a U shape, closing off all sides and folding my main lining panel out of the way. So I am sewing over the zipper tape at the top, over the zipper teeth, and then through the bottom piece of zipper tape, pivoting. sewing in that U shape. And then I'm just gonna trim off the little extra zipper tape, but you still wanna leave plenty within the seam allowance so that it doesn't fray over time or malfunction or anything like that. So super quick little zipper pocket. So cute. And then I always like my zipper pocket to be on the back side of the bag. So I'll go ahead and baste this with this panel as well. 
And I definitely could have waited and done all layers at once, but I just felt like it's easier to get some things in place and then sew around again. Can't hurt. I have one piece of zipper tape prepped and ready to go. I added two zipper pulls and I'm gonna go ahead and start by sewing my gusset pieces together, my lining and my exterior. I'm doing this, this method a little bit differently than is instructed in the pattern because I don't want any raw edges inside how did I do this last time? It might be a raw edge up against the backpack, actually, but I'm not super worried about it. And Dorothy isn't going to care. <laughs> Alright, so these are my zippered gusset pieces. So this gets attached to one side of the zipper. So I'm adding double-sided tape to the edge that I want to attach to my zipper. On the lining and the exterior. I'm using eighth inch wide double sided tape for this part. That way it's completely out of the seam allowance or it's completely in the seam allowance and won't show up on the zipper tape. I've cut my zipper tape longer than it needs to be so that my zipper pulls are completely off the edge. So I don't have to worry about shifting them back and forth. And lay it right sides with the exterior fabric and lining on the other side. And I'll we'll sew that together. And then I'm going to iron this open. And top stitch. I can finger press.
All right. And then we're going to put the gusset that was sewn together right sides together with our exteriors touching and our linings touching. And repeat that on the other side. Bring your zipper pulls in. You're going to line it up with the edge of the fabric, not your zipper. So you've got this loop here with your zipper gusset in the middle of the side gusset pieces, and I believe it's like a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure to back stitch over that zipper to help reinforce. And then open that up and your pieces should lay flat, no looping. You got looping, it's bad. <laughs> and I'm going to top stitch through the exterior and the lining so that they all lay nice and flat. And then I'm going to baste the bottom gusset all together so that I don't have any shifting when I attach it to the exterior cargo pocket. And it'll give me a chance to even up my lining and my exteriors. And for this side, I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to take my scissors and just trim off all of my extra threads. We're not going to trim away the extra zipper tape that's uneven because that is going to get caught in a seam that will be hidden. So I'm truly not worried about it. That and I don't like to trim zipper tape because it could begin to fray, which will weaken your item. So then we'll fold this in half. We already have our bottom center marked out with how we attached the gusset panels together. So I'm going to make a little snip at the top gusset here. And a little mark on my zipper on both sides. And then I'm gonna snip the centers of the front cargo pocket. I think I might add a little cork label. I don't want a metal label. It just seems like a bit much for, again, a two-year-old's backpack. Let's see. So this is a leather label that is hand dyed from Heartwood and Hyde. I'm gonna grab my ruler again so I can center it. I'm gonna center it two inches, two and two point two five inches from the top. 
with the print. I don't want to cover up anything. She's obsessed with Eugene, so got to make sure he's front and center. <laughs> that into place and then we'll get started on the gusset. Centers are marked out, and I want to be attaching the side with the zipper that's open. And if you need to, you can use some double-sided tape for this. There are marks on the pattern for where to line up the top of the gusset, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And then when I attach the other side of the lining, I'm going to leave a little piece open to then turn it through so that there's no raw edges on the inside of the bag. Well, minimal raw edges inside. And if you need to, on this little curve here, you can add a couple of little snips to help it sit nicely. Okay, things are feeling pretty good. I'm going to start at this zipper tape and just start sewing. My stitch length is set to a 4.5, which I like to use as a construction stitch, and sometimes I'll bump up to a 5 for top stitching. And I'm just kind of holding that zipper tape in place as we sew around the edge. can zip my zipper pulls back the way I've already sewn or you can leave it open so that you're only dealing with one edge of that gusset versus two. And then I'm going to take the lining side and make sure you keep in mind the way the curve of this piece is. sew it from this side so that I can see my basting stitches. 
if you need to, you can unzip your zipper all the way to help reduce any bulk. And I'm gonna leave like a three inch, three or four inch opening along the bottom edge to turn through. And then I will catch it when I top stitch. And it can't hurt to kind of mark out the opening you want to leave as a reminder. Otherwise, you might be sad. And previously I added um, cargo slip pockets to this interior pocket, but I, again, she's not going to need them. I have the snacks in my bag. <laughs> So there are my marks for the opening I'm going to leave. And we'll sew around, making sure to backstitch. And then I'm coming in about an eighth of an inch from that basting line to start. Quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch. Going nice and slow and resituating those layers as needed. Making sure that my zipper isn't bunched up, kind of feeling through all those layers. zipper pull at this curve so I'm going to unzip so that everything can sit a little bit nicer. Excuse you. What are you doing? There we go. There we go. Zip it. I bet I could use a stiletto tool for this. That would be helpful. <laughs> oh well. Second mark, so I'll back stitch and remove. Then I'm going to trim the curves at the bottom, but not at the top. If you are worried about the extra fabric at the top, you could trim away just the lining, but don't cut through your zipper teeth. So I trimmed away the excess at the curves, but not at the top. We can turn through. All right, I've got that pressed out and then I have folded under that birthing hole. And if you need to, you can tape it into place. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt, right? Because we're going to be top stitching from the front, not the inside. And I know there's a method to have made that. Yeah, you fold it so that the raw edges 
are in, especially down at the bottom. And then for this, you would create like a sleeve. Ah, that's okay. It'll be fun. So I'm feeling along the seam down at the bottom where I'm gonna start sewing because I wanna make sure I'm catching the bottom of that turning hole. catch the gusset here but that's another reason I like using the cotton lycra is it's not gonna fray so I'm kind of tucking that into the seam so that I can top stitch through it to hold it a little bit longer all those layers before you top stitch. All right, so that is the front pocket. And I think according to the instructions, you like fold over this edge and then sew it into place. So I'll go ahead and use this double-sided tape here all the way around that seam to fold over so that I don't have a raw edge. On the large size, I added a zippered pocket to the front panel of the bag. I'm not going to this time. Uh, the bag's a little bit smaller, of course, but just don't see a need to add it. So that's fully pressed into place. gets a little bulky at the side of the gusset where you've attached all of those layers, so keep that in mind. Maybe when you're interfacing, if you have a domestic, you can leave the interfacing out of that seam or trim down your seams.
I'm gonna grab my front panel. Okay, so now it's time to line this front pocket up on the bag. And I'm just gonna eyeball it, to be honest. I'm gonna start by attaching the bottom like an inch and a quarter up. And I'm going to add a line of stitching to hold that in place. I'm lining up my center snip with the center gusset line and I'm starting at the straightest edge. my threads to the back and like I said I'm going to do a few rows just to get it in place and then I'll work out those curves because you want it to have a nice 3D shape. And standing is definitely going to be the easiest way to get it into place. Got it about an inch from the other side edge into place. And here is where I can connect that curve because I've got it in place. I think I'm going to do two rows of stitching to hold this in place. Okay, I'm going to sew up the side and then I'll straighten out the top edge. Pretty good. So I'm continuing on with the first line of stitching. And then when I 
get to the second or the other stopping point on the side, I'm going to move my stitching in about an eighth of an inch so that there's two lines of stitching to help reinforce this pocket, even if it is wonky. And if you have an issue with pulling your threads back, you can always pull on one thread to find the loop and then take your snips inside that loop and pull. And it'll bring it to the front. So like here, this little pink loop, I can pull that through and it'll bring it to the back. And so it's kind of nice about using this variegated, variegated thread too, is it's a little bit easier to see. <laughs> see how bad we did. That doesn't seem too bad. I think my bottom is a little low maybe, but once you fill it with something, nobody's gonna know. And then I might need to do a little hand whip stitch because this is still open just just slightly all right so now we can add the lining to the front panel and move on to the gusset um, I had this little piece of leftover webbing and I didn't want to throw it away so I'm adding it to the lining just a few inches up from the bottom, oh, maybe about halfway, yeah, and I cut it so it will come forward a little bit to create a loop, so I figure if we put like blankets in here or something that'll kind of hold those items back. Probably could have added like elastic maybe to help it even further, but I just thought, you know, this little loop and the lining keep things in place. I don't know. I could always cut it out later if I hate it. It's also not my backpack. The lining fabric I'm using is from FWD Fabrics. It is a waterproof canvas. Um, I think it's lavender. It's really pretty. Okay. And we can 
baste all of those layers in place. And then make sure you move that webbing out of the way if you used webbing too. trim away the excess lining fabric so that my seam allowances stay consistent of the backpack I'm really tempted to chain stitch her name on the front she won't care though I won't care we are in the home stretch we just have to do the zipper gusset and the bottom gusset so for this piece um, this is like 4.7 inches wide so I cut 4.7 inches wide for the top zipper panel, and then I cut it at two inches, and then whatever else on the other, so 2.75. Um, just because I like there to be one on each side so that I don't have to worry about the raw edge of the zipper being up against the backpack or anything. That's totally just my personal preference. Um, I've got um, a really long piece of zipper tape here that I'm going to add a zipper pull to each end for. Um, and again, this is longer than my zipper gusset is so that I have plenty of extra zipper tape within the seam allowance so it doesn't come undone over time. Okay. Double-sided tape first. I'm going to start with the smaller edge for both pieces. And the gusset is kind of a fussy cut. And then my eighth inch wide double sided tape. Oh, did I break my nail? No, but I no, I totally did. Dang, that sucks. Anyway, <laughs> tis the life of a bag maker. Oh my god, I'm so excited! This is the last of this double sided tape. I can get a new roll that has been untouched by a toddler. Yes. off of it I'm gonna be honest I don't know where I purchase most of my zipper tape especially since I purchased a ton of random eighth inch rolls from places so who's to say it's all very likely user error I feel like when you tear instead of cut the roll you're likely to Disconnect. <laughs> so 
and we'll start on the exterior and lay your zipper face down. And you want about an inch within your seam allowance. And then I've got plenty so that my zipper pulls are completely out of the seam allowance so that when I sew these together, I don't have to worry about moving my zipper pulls. I feel like a broken record. lining side and I'm folding the exterior over top Add the other side of the zipper panel, lining up the exterior edges first with the other raw edge of the zipper tape. We're going to flip it over since I didn't add my double sided tape to the lining. Just do it to this side of the zipper. Make sure you've got right sides together. Oops, sorry, sorry. I don't know why I apologize, like I literally hit you. with your extra zipper pulls. Well, pull your zipper pulls in. This is just a paste film that keeps them protected. Um, I believe I got these from luxhardware.com. The zipper tape was from my website. Um, I'm not sure where this exterior fabric is from. Um, my friend Melanie at Zorel had it and sent it to me. Um, when I told her, when I posted, like, hey, I need a backpack for Dorothy. Does anyone have any extra fabric? She delivered, literally. All right, sewing the bottom seam of the side gusset together. Through the exterior and through the lining. Yep. I've got a little uneven. Sandwich 
these edges together and everything should line up perfectly because whatever we took away by adding the zipper tape, no, but yeah, both. The zipper tape took up the space for the seam allowance. I, I really don't know how else to explain it. Alchemy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so lining sides together for the gusset. It's just like how we lined up all of those edges for the front pocket piece. Your linings facing each other, your exteriors facing each other. And I believe it's a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Open up that seam. Ah, crud. I was going to add a D-ring to the side of the bag. I still can. I think I'm going to. Um, I was going to actually just add it into the seam, but I think I'll just sew it on the side of the bag. I figured if she wants to clip a little like keychain off of the side or something, she can. Thank you, Bobbin. What a perfect end. <laughs> All right, so here is my little piece of webbing and I had it folded in half to just sew into the seam, but I'll go ahead and fold it so that raw edges are in. And sew that into place. If the top of the zipper Hmm. It's not too bad, but I was just thinking I could sew two of them onto the side so that if need be, I could wear it as like a crossbody strap, crossbody bag, but we should be fine. And the zipper isn't centered, but I'm going to center this connector onto the bag. Whenever that happens, turn off your machine. What it is, is my bobbin is stuck. So, that's okay. I'm going to lift the needle back up, pull everything off the machine, get that bobbin out of there. And just re-insert the bobbin. And try again. Okay. So then when you turn the machine back on, should go back to normal. Should be happy again. Yeah. Pull out any of those stitches if you can, because you don't want it to happen again. Oh, lost my D-ring. I'm gonna go ahead and use tape this time. just because I was feeling lazy before. Oh, this is not the one that likes to be ripped. Where did that one go? that down. And I'm just sewing through the exterior and the lining. See, it's happy now.
Okay, so now we can just baste all the way around the gusset. We can, we can trim to match up. Make sure you bring your stitch length back down before you start sewing everything again. And I'm gonna trim off my extra threads to start. And then I'm gonna trim all those layers to match. You can see my lining at the zipper panel. This always happens, it's a little less than. But I think actually it's not too bad. Um, I can make up for that when I add the binding. So I'm not gonna trim that down, risking my panels to not match very well. I guess it almost seems too big, but fingers crossed it's not. I'll fold this in half. still don't now would be a good time if you're adding side pockets to add them like you, there's about to be a point of no return and I don't have any extra mesh that I could add them again I, it's just for her she'll be fine <clears throat> she can put a drink inside the bag she'll be fine Right, I've got plenty of clips there. I'm going to go ahead and start with the front of the bag because I want this smaller of the panels to be at the front of the bag. So lining up my center snips. You can use double-sided tape to help you hold all this together if you'd like. Um, I will include a video at the end of me adding the chain stitched name, but I did... I did do it. CJ was like, do it. Why would you have the machine if you're not going to use it? <laughs> you're right, you're right. All right, my stitch length is bumped back down. Good. And then I'm going to add binding to this edge after I attach these panels together. And then we'll add the back panel, add the binding, um, and then I need to undo the straps at the ends because I did attach the hardware incorrectly. And CJ was like, mm, if you can redo it, you probably should. Yeah, sure. You're right. I find that the shape of this backpack is super forgiving, especially if you're not using a ton of interfacing. Um, and then I'm just gonna come in about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch from my basting. And 
as I get to a corner, I kind of maneuver my layers and squish them flat. I'm going to trim down this layer just a little bit, not a whole lot. If you have it too small, then your binding is too floppy. I'm using a one inch wide strip of waterproof canvas so I can just fold the edges over. Um, but like this area right here where my exterior fabric is poking out just a little bit from the gusset, you want to trim that down. And then you can check from this side to make sure that your edges are all caught. Oh, things are lined up pretty well, which is good. It's so cute, but I'm worried it's too big. <laughs> she might be fine. She'll grow into it, right? Okay. And then I'll show you how I add the binding and keep it in real mo. And then I will do the other side with time lapse so that I can not say words because clearly I'm not very good at it today. <laughs> and then this video isn't super long. I'm using half inch wide double sided tape to help me hold it in place, especially around the curves. And I'm just folding it and pinching over those raw edges as I go.
folding down that last raw edge. You want to overlap where you started. Okay. Stitch length is still set to 4.5. these zipper pulls too. I wanted something big that she can hold, but nothing too heavy. So these are great. Kind of wish I'd added some kind of pocket situation to the inside of this, but not a big deal. Yeah, we're going to add that last side. Go ahead and unzip this so it's easy to turn through. Time to turn it. Yes, I just used scraps of <laughs> waterproof canvas. She's not gonna care. along all of those corners. It really is just such a forgiving shape and fabric. Like, really obvious puckers don't happen because the knit fabric is so forgiving because it's definitely you know I've got puckers it is what it is it feels like a mini backpack for a human of regular size so I am a little worried that it's too big for her Okay, 
So now I need to unpick these, which is so sad, but at least I have this fancy and pretty seam ripper. I have a pink one too. I think I put it, oh, I put it in this drawer. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. But this one's pretty too. Um, someone made these based off of the glitter clips that I sell. They have like jelly shoes. They got the vibe. They got the memo. <laughs> and I love them. Okay. I'm tempted to just cut it off and reattach. <laughs> but no, I can pick it. Does that mean I can't do it the way I initially did it? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, so that is correct because then the webbing touches both textures on the front and then on the back. So I can't do it the way I thought I could. <laughs> Damn it. Melting all that super carefully. I haven't eaten lunch. Or I haven't eaten today. All right, so what is my plan then? I can fold this over and whoa. I don't have enough to fold it over and still have enough overhang. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little piece of vinyl that's one inch by one inch probably to encase that raw edge and then I'm gonna finish sewing and I'll still do the box stitch to help reinforce it but that's the only solution I can think of um, I will have edited the video hopefully to say let's do it this way all right so to finish off the raw edge of my webbing. I've cut a piece that is one inches wide by one and a half inches long, and I'm just going to sew over that. And I'm gonna repeat that step here as well. And then So editing Lauren here. All right, so fixing it, continuing on the strap. Oh, crap. It slipped away. That's okay. Move that back into place. I'm gonna be sewing that box stitch again anyway, so it should be pretty secure.
actually, I think I'm just going to add a little rivet through there so that I don't have to keep sewing it. All right, and this time I'm going to make sure it doesn't slip away. wanted to you could edge coat the sides of your vinyl. I'm not gonna worry about it. All right and that uh, oh yeah then we gotta slide this through. So you go up through the back and down through the front. And if you used a really thick vinyl, slide it through first. But now you can see it locks into place the right way. Up through the back, down through the front. So much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know I don't use this machine that often, but it's because it's so precious to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is making the kid size Elena backpack, and I hope you try it out if you have been wanting to make a kid size backpack. This is super cute. <laughs>